I came to know the work of Rosa Clemente, whose undergraduate work was at the State University of New York at Albany, and then who went to Cornell University and studied under some of the most wonderful leaders who also were victims of that same counterintelligence program. And then I understood that Rosa's tentacles within the community reached beyond just perhaps those recording artists that, whose names that we know, but that reached into a deep political consciousness that had long before declared its independence. In fact, they had declared their independence from the current political order even before I had. And so that is why I chose Rosa Clemente for the substance of her work and the quality of her analysis and the tentacles with which she can reach out into the broader, larger community of disfranchised young people who need to have a voice and a reason to believe in this country. And just say whatever. I know it's been a grueling. It's hot. Y'all think it's hot here in Denver. You ain't been to Georgia. <laughs> but Rosa, come on up. <laughs> this wonderful young woman has a great future in this country. And she was a member of the Green Party long before I was. And I'm shorter. Um, it's been a grueling day because this is a grueling struggle, man. It's, uh, it's, uh, wow. You know, today was a heavy attack day against uh, me and Cynthia. That, that was with me and uh, Yannick. You know, this struggle can be emotional. Yes. And it's okay. It's all right. And um, to keep coming into spaces where there are people really ready to struggle is amazing in itself. You know? But, I, you know, often people, especially from women, take tears, right? Like, this is so not a Hillary Clinton moment. Please, <laughs> media people, don't spin this on my ass. Because I'm about to bring it back real nice. This is how hip-hop is, man. We go from um, every direction, you know. I actually was invited to a DNC event um, today, hosted by Hill Harper, the actor from CSI, and Danny Glover, and Angela Bassett. Definitely was an Obama crowd, and I even had called him and said, are you sure you want me? I am running against your candidate, Joe Biden. Are you sure? And they said, yeah. And it's amazing that no matter how much I know about COINTELPRO and the system, this setup always happens. Yes. yes. And you know, one thing I learned about politics, especially political science, when I was majoring in that at the beginning, is that there's a civility, right? We'll debate each other, but we're gonna shake hands and walk off and have our civil discourse or uncivil discourse amongst ourselves. But it was a setup and um I was with M1 and Dead Prez, and the minute I began to speak, time ran out. And it was it wasn't even uh, a wrap up. The, the Hill Harper just completely cut me off. It was so bad that the Democratic sister next to me, who was a super delegate, apologized on behalf of the Democrats for the way I was treated. Cause they clearly it was such an uncomfortable moment. So because I am a student of Colin Telpro, because I am a activist, because. I sat at the feet of Jalil Muntikin and Dilcia Pagan and Lolita Lebron and Rafael Casa Miranda. It's not an emotional thing, it's more like, wow. It's not even the setup, it's 
everybody's really falling for the Kool-Aid. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, you knew who you were bringing, and I went in there not disrespecting the candidate as a human being. I'm married to a black man. See, my generation can clearly see the historical nature of that nominee, as well as Cynthia McKinney. But my generation, we're critical, because in hip hop, we, as black and brown people, cannot afford the less of two evils. We ain't got time for that shit no more. Guantanamo Bay torture, yeah. that began in Chicago. That's right. It began on December 4th, 1969, when this government killed Fred Hampton and tried to kill his wife and kill Fred Hampton Jr. It began when Tupac was set up by this government. People cannot un underestimate Tupac comes from a Fini Shakur, <laughs> stepfather Matulu Shakur, who's a political prisoner because he began the first acupuncturist movement in this country to detox people on heroin. And he went into the Bronx with the young lords, took over Lincoln Hospital, and then less than three months detoxed over 7,000 people in the Bronx. Why was Matulu Shakur set up? Why is Tupac murdered in Las Vegas? Why does Biggie become a casualty of that Colantel Pro? People think we're messing around. Any torture and any war is practiced in black and brown communities. First and foremost in this country. How do you think they get it together? They come into our neighborhoods. When we talk about no snitching, we're not talking about people murdering people and not having a community response to that. We're talking about we will not engage with the police right. who are in this room right now, whatever agent you are, at any level, because we see you. Not only do we see you as a Puerto Rican, Albizu Campos getting a radiation light put in his jail when he was in Atlanta in the prison system, the same one Matulu Shakur would occupy 25 years later. Just like when Asada was locked up, Lolita LeBron was in that jail and mentored Asada Shakur. And Lolita and them celebrated. Every prisoner in America celebrated the day Asada Shakur was broken out and given freedom in Cuba, where she resides to this day. This is the legacy of my people. This is where hip hop comes from and it speaks to. So it's not the attack. It's just that we can't understand how in 2008, when the hip hop generation has talked about it, b-boyed about it, graphed about it, written about it, from New Zealand to Brooklyn to Panama to Cuba to Poland to Palestine, why doesn't everybody else get it? That's right. What is going on? What is going on within our party itself that we would allow COINTELPRO to come in and disrupt this movement? What is that about? We can debate. We cannot be debating each other and tearing each other down. They're waiting for the opportunity to come in and counter insurgents this whole movement. That's what they're trying to do to us. But. Because I come from a tradition, I'm Boricua. My people are American citizens. The biggest disenfranchisement happens every four years on the island of Puerto Rico where American citizens were the number one Latinos to be drafted, the number ones on the front lines to be killed. But you live on the island, you can't vote, but the colonial status makes you have to suffer under every American governmental law. That's the biggest disenfranchisement, and then after that is the three million African American and Latino voters that are purged both by the Republicans and Democrats off those polls. Why? Because those are people like my husband. High school dropouts, convicted felons. Those are the gang bangers, the undocumented worker. Those are the 52% in my generation that at this moment haven't even registered to vote. Forget the Dems and Republicans. They're not seeing anybody else. So we become those people. And that's what hip hop is about.